Welcome to my humble little office. My name is R. Keith Andrews. I am a spiritual guide and paranormal adept. The journey continues today on July 12, 2021 at approximately 1.26 p.m. PST. You know, you really sort of have to wonder what's going on, you know, as far as the world goes. Now, I posed, I posed a lot of, I posed a question to a number of people today. How do you tell if your problem, if the problem you're having with your community is because you understand your community or because you don't understand the community? You know, and I got some interesting sidetracks to it, some interesting responses to it. But the the biggest thing that I found is, you know, the biggest thing I found is you cannot, because you cannot control the way other people think. Or at least, I've run into very few people that can. There are purportedly some telepaths out there that can. But, since on the whole, you can only control the way that you respond to the way other people are. That's where you have to start. And it all comes back to the same thing. If you desire your world to change, you have to take a look in the mirror and go, Okay, what about my world am I personally not content with? Okay. Once you figure that out, and that's the easy part, because if you try figuring out what you're going to be content with down the road, okay, things can change, things can go sideways. There was a there was a, a funny little joke called one day that went, if you ever want to give God a laugh, tell him your plans. Okay, well, I don't know about you, but my life has gone its own way more often than I care to count, and even when I've tried planning things, it hasn't worked out necessarily, at least not at the speed I was aiming for. But, what I can tell you is by correcting the energy in your home, by correcting the way it's flowing, because energy cannot be stopped. It doesn't stop, it doesn't get destroyed, it just gets mined, it just gets redirected. Okay, it's like water. Water does not get destroyed. You can change its form, you can boil it and turn it into gas, there's no problem there. But even then, you're not changing its movement. Okay, so the whole trick here is really take a look in the mirror and decide what do you have control over, where it comes to your own life. Okay, and that which you've got control over, take a look and ask yourself one thing. Am I content with that aspect? And ask it about anything. If you're not content with the way your desk is looking, ask yourself why not. If you're not happy with it, make a change. Doesn't matter what change you make, because you can always change it again if it doesn't work out the way you'd like. Okay. But this is an ongoing process. It may not you may change it one day and have to change it the next. That's okay. The one consistency in this war in, in existence is change. Even if we go down to the smallest particles, okay, right down to and to atoms, okay, you have the electrons leaving the atoms and going to another into another atom. Net result, we have constant change going on. This happens throughout all of existence. Now. I meant to get to it yesterday, and this is what I meant by all the all the plans I do in the world are a little bit rough, are a little hard to come by on occasion, because my son, my schedule gets a little screwy. So what I'm doing right now is I'm getting I'm going through this particular video, and as soon as I get this one done, then I start working on, and I I did figure out how to do it. I'm going to in. In my my Facebook page, okay, I've got a, a Facebook page called Ilderbach, which is dedicated solely to the no, to the novel saga that I'm writing, okay, and I'll be working on that to to go back to where it all began and start walking people through how that process came, okay. Now, I don't know. Um, I don't know if you're going to be watching this. This is more an exercise for the way the book is going, which is why I'm not going to go into it a lot here, but that's one of my major goals in life right now. As I said, I've got four major goals. One is getting this video out, getting it. It's got to, in my opinion, I don't know about your opinion, but I've got to find a way to make this a little bit more, 
I think the word is energetic. Okay. Because I can harp on things that are that are going sour, but what we really have to look at is what are people doing that are that are really moving forward. Okay. One of the biggest things that I've noticed is when people get it, when you get an idea in your head, now everybody has dreams, everybody's got goals. A lot of them are, a lot of dreams other people will tell you are way out to lunch. Okay, I know of one young lass that had a dream when she was younger of becoming a member of the MMA. Okay, well I'll tell you, thumbs up to her because she managed to attain it. Okay, or more to the point, well, she's already gotten into it. I don't know if she's got a contract yet, but I do know she won't quit until she does. And then she'll just carry on. There was a young gentleman several years ago by the name of Colonel Sanders that had a dream. When he retired, he opened a chicken stand. Because people did not like the way he was doing, did not want to do it his way, he closed the chain, the chain he closed the, the doors for for a period and then reopened today he's a household name okay when i was a kid i had a dream of writing a story okay well it is now in print okay i know of another another young lass that had a dream of standing up in front of several thousand people and singing we saw her actually attain that okay she got in front of several thousand people to sing Okay, you have your own dreams, whether they are, are humongous. Maybe your dream is as simple as what many people consider simple. Find yourself a decent, you know, find yourself a decent partner. Settle down, have a beautiful life, raise a, raise a number of, of kids, and that's what you call your dream. I know of a number of people that have that as a dream, and they, you know, one in particular I know of, had that dream while she was living on the street on her own. At this point, I know for an absolute certainty, I don't know if she's if she's actually married to the person, but I do know that she has gotten off the street into a stable home. She's managed to have, she's got a couple of kids, they're all, and they're both together. These are dreams people have that may seem really far-fetched. Okay, I've known a number of people that that spent a lot of time on the street and are now holding down full-time jobs they've gone through the trials through the tribulations they had a dream to get into a better life they've managed to attain it okay myself my dreams are a lot bigger okay than some i would like to see more on this planet and i'm told this can't be done of course understand when i was also told Centuries back, the, the Scottish clans would never unite. The 13 colonies of the United States would never, would never support each other. Okay, and yet here we are in this day where many of these absolutely humongous dreams were, were actually made manifest. If you've got a dream, doesn't matter how, how off-center it might seem or how far-reaching it may be, do not give up on it. Okay, if you've got a dream to be an author, to be a singer, to be an actor, to be a poli a, a, a world-moving politician, doesn't matter what the dream is. You know, follow your heart, but use your head to get there. Okay, all almost all dreams are possible. Okay, now there are some that are definitely further reaching, like for instance, you may find it really problematic to be able to be able to fly without any form of aerial conveyance. Okay, that does not mean it's impossible. I love the United the United States military statement uh, frame of mind. The difficult we're doing, the difficult we're already doing. The impossible just the impossible just takes us a little longer. Okay, now I'm a firm believer that there is virtually nothing that's impossible. I came to this conclusion decades ago when the, when the doctors diagnosed me as dead and shipped me off to the morgue and I walked out of it. Apparently death isn't quite as solid a thing as many people think. Okay, now do I have proof of this? No, 
Okay, not that I can find, but I do have memories, and I do have corroboration that I've had, not the least of which was from my own father on his deathbed. Now, I'm not here to tell you to make you believe what I'm telling you. Only to tell you that all things are not necessarily as they're portrayed. But if you've got a dream, start with the basics. Look at yourself and go, okay, this is the dream I desire that I've got. Now, how do I attain that dream? What am I doing right now that is actually not helping? Whatever is not helping towards that dream. Now, this is going to sound a little hyper-focused. But get that dream firmly in your head. Preferably get it on paper. Okay, and the reason you put it on paper, or if you happen to be blind and don't use paper, you, you record it so that you can get at it easily. But get, a, get a, a physical form of it so that you can sit down and go and draw the energy out of the spiritual world into the material world and make it manifest. Now, take a look at that dream. And go, okay, what is holding me back? Why am I not getting to that point? Okay, and whatever is blocking the path, make a modification to it so you can work past that block. Sometimes that will take talking to other people. Even if that is not a comfort zone of yours. Okay, it'll take some time to, to really get to that point. Now, with that in mind, you take a, you take a look at that aspect... Okay, and you move the, the energy so that you can actually get the stuff out of the way that's blocking you. You know, if you're trying to go down a hallway and a chair is in the way, you don't climb over the chair constantly, at least I hope not. You move the chair out of the way so it's no longer a problem. Once you've done that, okay, that's when you turn around and now, you can, and now the energy can flow down the hall. You can see it in water easily enough. Take a pan, set it in the water, like just take a cookie sheet, set the cookie sheet at an angle in the sink, okay, and then turn the tap on and let the water run down the run down that path. Now here's the thing. While you're watching the water run down that pan, put your finger in the pan in the edge of the pan and watch the way the water goes around it. Okay. The the water will shift direction and come back where it's heading. Now if you desire to get that block out of the way, well, in this case, pull your finger out of the water. And you'll find the water, that the water, the energy, all of a sudden starts moving a lot more smoothly. Now, this is the way energy works. When you eliminate the negative stuff, when you redirect the energy so it's not running into the blocks, the dreams that you've got, however different they may seem to other people, are the dreams that you're going to be able to manifest. Okay. Now... This little ring, okay, this little ring here, that came from my brother, okay, and it always reminds me of, of one little detail. The last time I spoke to him, one of the last things he told me before, before he passed away was, whatever anybody tells you, if you've got a dream, if you've got something that you really desire, don't let anybody tell you it's not possible. Keep pushing for it. Well, I keep that ring on my finger because of the fact it reminds me of that little conversation. Okay, not that I really need a lot of reminding. My, my brother and I, we were reasonably close for the most part. But he passed away 10 years ago. And, you know, the reality, well, that's a new, a new thought. Hmm. Apparently, I still miss him, which is a good thing. But, when you've got a dream, okay... When, when you have a dream that you'd like to attain, take a look at what, the, uh, at what is in your way. What's stopping you? Like right now, I've got, like I've got my computer here. And I've got an extended keyboard because the keyboard on the computer I'm using has already started to fade. So, of course, I've got paperwork all over the keyboard that I don't use. But it does have this neat little tendency of blocking off everything else on the, on the keyboard. Which I don't really need, but it does have to be moved. This much I know. And again, it really boils down to taking a look at where the energy is, what is moving, what is not. Okay. So, when you've got a dream, not to worry, that's not pop, that's actually water. 
Not that that actually matters to you, but something I found with the heat up here right now is I take old pop bottles, right, that I've rinsed out and what have you, fill them with water, stick them in the freezer. I've got ice water right there. Okay. Figure the freezer's running anyway, I might just as well fill it with ice water. But when you've got it when you've got a dream, doesn't matter what it is. Okay. Now the reality of it is this. You've got to stay focused. Okay, because success the only person on the planet that can be successful for you is you. You can get all the guidance from everybody around you you desire. But the reality is that the only person that can do anything about it is you. So take a look at what you at what it is you desire. Get focused on it. Remember four things. Where it comes to success, you and there are four steps to it. You have to have a purpose. What are you aiming for? What is the thing you consider successful? Okay, you've got to have a purpose. Then you've got to have a plan. How am I going to take, how am I going to get from where I am to actually where I desire to be? How am I going to get that, that goal, that success? How am I going to make it manifest? Okay, once you've got the plan, then the plan will come from, it'll start in the spiritual world, come to the emotional heart, then it'll come up into the, into the logical mind, and then into the physical body. Okay, once you've got that plan sorted out, then you have to realize that, first of all, it didn't take you, it didn't take you overnight in all likelihood to get to where you are. So it's likely going to take you some time to get it turned around and move in another direction. So you're going to have to have persistence. Once you've got the plan in place, one step at a time, one day at a time, one hour at a time, however you want to break it down, okay, then you're going to have to have the patience to let it work. Because let's face it, you can you can get a purpose. Okay, purpose, I'm going to make a cake. Now trust me on this, I'm not going to make a cake. But it will serve for the purpose. Purpose, I desire to make a cake. So plan. Here's a whole list of ingredients and a whole list of methods on what has to be done to make it. So put them all together in the pan, in the in the bowl, mix them up, pour them into the pan. Now you pop them into the oven. You've got to have the persistence to get the timing right, get it all put together properly. Get it into the oven with the oven turned on, definitely preheated. Otherwise, I, I've heard all sorts of really bad horror stories there. But you put it in. You've had the persistence to get it into the oven. Now you've got to have the patience to let that cake finish cooking. Okay. Once it's cooked, your purpose has been fulfilled. You've gone from an idea to a physical cake that you're now able to eat. Same thing applies to any other project. Where it comes to writing. Okay. And this is, you know, where it comes to writing, you start off with a concept. You build on that concept until it comes out to what you're aiming for. Then you go after after the publication side of it. Now, on my Facebook page, on Ilderbach, on my Facebook page, Ilderbach, I will be posting the the step-by-step -step procedure, but I'm going back to the beginning, to where it all started. I'm going to go through it one step at a time. If you're in the, if, if you're of the mindset that you desire to write, whether it's a story, whether it's a song, it won't matter. The principle is still the same. Okay. Where it comes to acting, you're going to have to make contact. And if you're having trouble talking to people, I'll tell you, becoming an actor, well, there's your first, your first challenge. If you're trying to get into acting, okay, if that's your goal, the first job is act as though you've already got the confidence to be in center stage. Because the only difference between you and the so-called professionals, the ones that are already making it big, the only difference between you and them is the length of time they've been at it. Now, I know of a couple of, of um, singers that I, that I listened to their interviews, and they literally said, look, yes, we are major, we're major, major singers, major artists, but we still get butterflies when we walk out on stage. Okay, so this is one of those goals 
that you know this is one of those misunderstandings i think that a lot of people have that just because they're up there they're perfectly calm many people that get into the spotlight aren't really as calm or as as relaxed as what they seem to say and seem to behave like many are very nervous i know of teachers that every time they like i'm talking school teachers that every time they walk out in front of their of their class they're like Am I going to be able to do this job right? Am I going to be able to get the kids to understand it? Okay. It's nothing new being edgy or being nervous, even once you're familiar with what you're doing. Okay. It's quite normal. So don't let, don't let that nervous disposition hold you back. Real easy to say, not always easy to do. Now I keep running into problems, and the re and this is why I asked that question at the beginning of this video. Okay, and absolutely, you know, if you if you can relate to what I'm talking about, absolutely give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel because there's a lot more information. I'm doing my level best to bring things up to speed so that we can look at the way things are progressing in a positive fashion. But you know. The, the, I like I saw a post on on Facebook today that was absolutely priceless in my eyes okay and I'm paraphrasing but what the post said was literally if you are claiming to be a light worker and you think the peace is brought by that that a better world is brought by a pile of bodies okay then you probably are not as much of a light worker as you think now, there was there was some flack that came out of that and i'm not going to go into that the point is this if you're following a spiritual guide and this is something i've i've repeated multiple times if you're following somebody that claims that they are a spiritual guide for you and they are talking about killing off one type of one um one race of people one color of people one thought process of people that's not peace Okay, peace has never been gained by superior firepower. Okay, quiet has been, but peace hasn't. So when you, if you're looking at, when you're looking at who you're following, who's telling you they're and that they are a, they're a spiritual guide, and they're saying, start a war, kill off these people. I'll tell you right now, that is not a positive spiritual guide. It is, a, it does have a spiritual outcome. You end up with a whole pile of spirits and a lot of dead bodies. Okay. But it's not peace. Again, karmic law says do unto others as you desire them to do unto you. Well, in all fairness, if you desire peace, if you desire the guns to stop firing, stop firing guns. And don't get me wrong, before anybody jumps on that, I'm not talking about taking guns away from anybody. Okay, well, that's not entirely correct. The people that are shooting people, absolutely the guns don't belong there. But, Guns themselves are not the problem. It's the mentality of the people holding on to them. Because, as I told one person years ago, if you take a gun and it is fully loaded and primed and ready to go off and you set it on the floor and nobody disturbs it, that gun will not go off and kill somebody. It'll just kind of lay there. The gun isn't the problem. The same thing applies with a car. If you take a car and you put the... In the and you set the car... In the in the in the driveway, and even if you turn the car on, okay, and you get out and nothing moves it, the car will not all of a sudden get up and go out and drive downtown and, and run over somebody. The car isn't the problem; it's the people that are handling these tools. Okay, now they talk about a gun being a weapon. Okay. Well, I'll tell you, a car can make a much bigger dent in people than a gun will. Okay. So really take a look at that. And ask yourself, the way you're living your life, is this what is this making you feel better? Okay. Now, I've asked people directly when I've been called down. I've literally looked at people and gone, do you feel better? You know, when I'm being, when I'm being walked on, when I'm being treated like a doormat. I'll look at the person and go, do you feel better? And of course, they look at you and go, um, what do you mean? And my, my usual response is, well, the way you're treating me doesn't make me feel good, so I'm hoping it's doing something for you. Okay. 
Take a look at the way the, that your life is going. Make the changes to your life so that, so that the things that aren't working well for you are being moved out of the way. You're redirecting the energy so that the things that are holding you back from your dreams, from your goals, are being modified so that you can actually attain the goals you have. Okay, if you desire to get your driver's license, you have to have the idea, I'm going out. Now remember, a driver's license is not a privilege. It is not a right. It is a privilege. So, take the time to learn the rules of the road that everybody's supposed to be following, and rest assured, the fact they're supposed to be following out there doesn't mean they're doing so. But take the time to learn the rules. Take the time to practice driving before you get your license. Then once you've got your license, remember the rules and stay following them. Okay. It is by changing the, the energy in your life that will enable you to, uh, to positively affect the energy in other people's lives, thereby making this a world that is better for most people. Okay. Now, I don't say for all people... Because the reality is some people at this point in their in their evolution still feel that them hurting people, them talking other people talking down to other people makes them a better person. Well, I like the way my father used to put it. It takes a bigger man to walk away from a fight than it does to get to throw the first punch. Okay. Now, as a result, in my case I'm very much against the whole conflict thing. Now, now to be to be clear, I've got a lot of respect for the people in the military in whatever country's military that step up to the plate and go, "I'm going to join the military to do to defend my way of life, to defend my you know my country, to defend the people I love." I absolutely commend them. Okay, being epileptic, the the government wouldn't take me in the military, which in my eyes was kind of a blessing for me because I had a problem with the whole concept of actually conflict. But, I do have a lot of respect for the people that, are, that actually join up with that purpose in mind. I have a lot of questions about the direct, about the orders they're given, and about the reasoning for the orders. But, the people in the military themselves, I absolutely have a lot of respect for. And this is one of the reasons why this thing I heard about a long time ago called Stolen Valor, where people pretend that they are, that they have been in the military, and therefore, they should get the extra the extra accolades and what have you. That, to me, is an absolutely heinous maneuver. Okay. But, I do feel that people have to, you know, it takes all kinds to make this world work. But for you to be successful, number one, you're the only person on the planet that can do that. So, I'll leave you with this thought. Three karmic laws. And these are the only three I ever find that I pay attention to. Okay, be true to yourself. Do unto others as you desire them to do unto you. Energy out, energy in. Okay, if you follow those three laws and take a look at your own guidelines you already live by, and I do believe you'll find that they all fit into those three. Okay, now I'm going to bring this to a close because we keep these to half an hour for a reason. So give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Okay. And until I talk again tomorrow, take care of yourselves and each other, and for pity's sakes, stay positive.